Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is a mid-year book freakout tag. I've been seeing everybody else posting their, their uh, videos for this and it's been really fun watching those so I thought I'd get in on the act uh, for my first year here on booktube and so it's fun to, it was fun to do this tag. One thing, I'm not entirely sure why is it called a freakout tag? If someone could tell me in the comment section that um, I'd be really interested to hear um, why, if anyone knows why it's called that. But it is a good chance to look back on the first half of the year in your reading and kind of uh, uh, do a little bit of thinking and uh, considering um, how your reading year is going so far. And so let's just get right into it. The best book that you've read so far this year is the first prompt. And this was actually really hard because I've read some really great books so far this year. But in the end, I decided to go with an instance of The Finger Post by Ian Pears. I read this for um, March Mystery Madness and I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved this book. It is huge, first of all. It's almost 700 pages, but it was brilliant. It's a historical mystery set in Oxford in 1663. So we're into the Restoration era here. King Charles II is on the throne. Um, it is a Protestant country, um, but there is still, you know, civil strife. And what I loved about this book was the structure. So there, there are four narrators, and each narrator tells their story completely, and then you move on to the next narrator. And I just absolutely loved that the author chose to tell it that way. So um, he's piecing out the story little by little. And as you move through the narrators, you get a better understanding of what's going on, but also a better understanding that each narrator is unreliable in that they are telling their own story, what's important to them, rather than telling the events of what has occurred because a dawn um, is killed in one of the Oxford colleges and uh, a girl, a servant girl, gets blamed for it. And that's kind of the, the story, but each narrator tells their part of that story, but more importantly, they're telling a personal story, what's going on with them. They choose to focus on what's important to them and by doing that, you learn more about the, the story of the murder, um, but you also learn maybe how unreliable each of the previous narrators were. And so I just really, really loved that. So this is definitely, so far, the best book that I've read in 2020. Uh, the next prompt is to the best sequel you've read so far this year. And for this one, I had to go with A Valley Conspiracy Most Foul by Shimini Flint. And I'll put the picture here. I don't have a copy. I read all these books from the library. So I read the first book in this series in 2019. I read it in like November or December. And I really enjoyed it. And so I continued. And so A Valley Conspiracy Most Foul is the second in the series. But I've continued on and read, I think I'm on the fourth or the fifth one now. I think I've read four. And I just really love this series. So it's set in kind of uh, Singapore, Malaysia area, Bali, kind of in that, in that area. And the main character is Inspector Singh. And um, in the fourth book, he actually gets to stay home in Singapore and investigate. But in all the other books, he gets sent to other places to do investigations. And in this one, he goes to Bali. Um, but I just really love this series. They're great mysteries. Inspector Singh is a great character. And I've given them all four stars, a couple of them four and a half stars. So it's a good, solid mystery. So definitely the best sequel that I've read so far. A new release you haven't read yet, but want to, and that is The Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. This uh, just came out this year, um, and I'm really looking forward to reading this. I'm hoping that I can get it done this month for Jane Austen July. 
the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And here I don't really have any because I don't keep that close attention on maybe the books that are coming out. Um, although maybe the new Amory Ames, I really love the Amory Ames historical mystery series by Ashley Weaver and she's got a new one coming out in September called A Deception at Thorncroft. And uh, so yeah, maybe I'll say that one. Those are uh, historical mysteries set in England in the 1930s. All right, number five, biggest disappointment. And for this one, I had to go with Eliza's Daughter by Joan Aiken. And I wonder if part of the reason why it was such a disappointment was because I just finished reading Sense of Sensibility by Jane Austen and loving it so much. And Eliza's Daughter is Joan Aiken's sequel, let's say, to Sense of Sensibility. And so if, if I read it just taking out that it had any connection to Sense of Sensibility, I may have enjoyed the, the story. So it's about the child of Colonel Brandon's ward from Sense of Sensibility, and she grows up in this book, and it's about her life and what happens. But the reason why this was such a disappointment to me was because I hated what Joan Aiken did to the characters. She changed their personalities, and she gave them just like horrible, depressing futures. I just, I did not like it at all. It was a huge, huge disappointment. Biggest surprise, um, and that one, I think I'm gonna have to go with The Girl Who Came Home by Hazel Gaynor. And I'll put a picture of it here. I had to take it back to the library. Um, and I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I, I did a video actually about it, about it, fiction in real life. Um, I'll link it maybe here in the cards. Um, but I would have to say that it's the biggest surprise because I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. And I was really surprised by how much I really, really liked that book. So yeah, biggest surprise. Seven favorite new author, debut or new to you. And I could go with Shemini Flint here. Um, I already talked about the Inspector Singh series, but technically I read her first in 2019. So instead I'm going to go with Robert Thorogood. I read two of his books this year, Murder in the Caribbean and Death Knocks Twice. These are um, Death in Paradise mysteries. Uh, Robert Thorogood is the creator of Death in Paradise, the TV series, which I absolutely adore. And these are books that he has written about those characters, but they're new, they're not based on any of the actual episodes or anything. And I really enjoy these books. I really enjoy, he's a good, he's a good author. He writes a good mystery. He writes very kind of Agatha Christie style mysteries. So there's often locked room or closed circle. They're very much puzzle mysteries. Um, and I, yeah, uh, so I think Robert Thorogood would have to be my favorite new author. Number eight is newest fictional crush and I don't get fictional crushes, so I'm just gonna move on. Uh, prompt number nine is newest favorite character. And for this, I had to go with Lady Eleanor Swift from um, Death at the Dance. Now, this was is the only one that I've read so far. I have the first in the series, this is the second, that I'm gonna read as well. But I know right away, just from one book, that I love this character. Lady Eleanor is fantastic. She is someone who is new to being a lady. In the first book that I have yet to read, she um, she's an adventurer who has to come home to England because an uncle has passed away and she has inherited. And so she becomes a lady, but she's not used to that um, 
level of society and those kind of expectations and so kind of watching her navigate that new world is really entertaining um she's a little bit klutzy and i i love that but i love how she relates to other people she's um she's kind and i love her relationship with her butler it's it's great and um i love that she she basically treats everybody equal so even though she's in this new world of being a lady she treats other ladies and lords the same way that she treats her butler and her housekeeper and uh i really like that um i also like how she behaves as an amateur sleuth because quite often amateur sleuths just do either really stupid things or have really dumb reasons for involving themselves in an, in an investigation. They end up really going against the police or in spite of the police and she doesn't do any of those things. Um, her, her behaviors and her motivations feel real. So yeah, Lady Eleanor Swift is my newest favorite character. Number 10, book that made you cry. I had a hard time with this because I just don't cry when I read books. I just don't. Um, but the book that came the closest, um, I would have to say, would be Mr. Rosenblum Dreams in English by Natasha Solomons, and I'll put the picture of it here. I read this book, um, I think, end of February, early March, and it was really good. So it's a, it's a historical fiction about a Jewish family that moves to England just before the Second World War. They're a German Jewish family and uh, the husband is like 100% focused on becoming an Englishman and becoming accepted in that society and in order to do that he feels like he needs to uh, develop a golf course and so he is single-minded that's all he cares about his wife on the other hand is really struggling she has a hard time with the move she has a hard time with leaving family and friends um, and she she's basically grieving for her old life and her husband is so focused on what he's doing with the golf course he just doesn't see it and uh, so yeah I think that was the book that came the closest uh, to making me cry. Number 11, a book that made you happy. And I'm going back to Death of the Dance here with Verity Bright because this book was hilarious. I was already laughing out loud ten like before I was 10 pages into this book. So this book made me happy. I love historical mysteries and so that made me happy. I love the character of Eleanor Swift. She made me happy because she made me laugh. This book made me happy because it made me laugh. I really enjoyed that. Uh, 12, most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. I had a hard time narrowing this down to just one, so I am going to show you three. The first is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Isn't this gorgeous? I just absolutely love this color cover and the spine too. So that's the first book that I have that is beautiful. Also, The Jane Austen Society. I think this is a really nice cover. I like it. I like the color blue. I like the flowers. Um, so yeah. And then my third possibility for most beautiful book is A Column of Fire by Ken Follett. I really love this design. I just think it's really, really nice. So yeah, so those are three of my most beautiful books. And then the last prompt is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And my answer to that is none, or whatever I want. I don't actually have any set in stone that I absolutely have to read. I read whatever I want because I read for enjoyment and I read whatever I feel like at the time. So I am looking forward to some more great books for the end of the year, but I don't feel like I absolutely have to read anything. Uh, so yeah, this is my mid-year book freak out tag. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little look into uh, my reading year so far. Have you read any of the books that I highlighted in this tag video? 
I'd love to hear about that in the comment section down below. And also, I would love to know what is the best book that you've read so far this year. So if you haven't put out a mid-year freakout tag um, video because you don't do videos or, or you're not going to do the tag video, then I'd love to hear in the comment section down below what is the best book that you've read so far this year. And I'll see you for another video soon. Bye!